Welcome final expense agents and brokers to the most popular audio training and podcast in the industry, The Lead Jerk Show, where we cut through the red tape and give you only the best in expert interviews. So strap in and grab a cold beverage and get ready to learn and earn. Now it's my pleasure to introduce you to the one and only Matt Lowry, also known as The Lead Jerk. Alrighty, everybody. This is Matt Lowry, and today we have David Duford with us, and he has just uh, published and written a new book. Uh, the name of it is The Official Guide to Selling Final Expense Insurance. Uh, the proven final expense insurance sales and lead generation system used by top final expense agents across the country. Welcome, David. I appreciate your time this morning. Man, that title's a mouthful when you hear it uh, <laughs> talked out loud about. But hey, how you doing today, man? Thanks for having me. Yeah, doing well, doing well. Hope you're doing well too. Um, yeah. So just flipping over to the back part too. Pretty good information. Uh, the most comprehensive guide to successfully selling final expense life insurance from the perspective of a time-tested, in the trenches final expense agent. And I can say. Uh, that would uh, surely hold true for you. So, let me ask you, David. What um, kind of what inspired you to do this? I mean, it's obviously it's uh, anybody that's done any kind of writing or publishing at all know this is kind of a big undertaking, especially with everything else that you have to take care of in your in your business. What what inspired you to, to do this? And uh, kind of tell us kind of where you know where it all came from. Yeah. So, you know, if, if there's any agent that has been in the final expense business for any length of time, you have, you know personally, I know personally, there's just a lot of bullshit. Yep. Okay? Let's just get right to it. Yep. You know, you've got agencies that have contractual uh, setups to where, you know, honest, hardworking agents, if they don't like the setup they're given, the agency, the carrier can, lead, I say, legally steal their over or their their commissions, their renewals, and the likes. Uh, you know, there's agencies that put new agents at, at abysmally low commission levels and make them pay full price for the leads. And on top of it all, there's just such a lack of quality training to take an agent to work alongside somebody who actually knows what they're doing. And so, you know, when I started working on this book, I actually started two years ago. And then I put it on the table. I got really busy building my, my mentorship agency business. And then I was able to afford myself some time to put the finishing touches on it. But the whole motivation to creating this book was just to provide a no BS approach to learning how to sell final steps without the motivational rah-rah, the Kool-Aid drinking nonsense. This book is designed to be a resource for new final expense agents to understand how you really sell final expense, how to do leads, how to prospect, how to present, and really the, some of the mentality aspects of this business in order to not, not to succeed over the short term, but also over the long term. Because frankly, with all that I've already mentioned, the lack of training, the bad setups that agents, many agents start off in that can really change their career before it even starts, there's just not a real honest transparent resource to help agents do it correctly. So that's the main motivation and that's what I hope to accomplish by writing this book. Right, and I know that you cover a pretty good bit in here. Uh, it's pretty comprehensive as far as even how to stay away from, you know, what some, you know, would consider that do not really understand stuff. They might consider it a good opportunity, but then again, they're, they're bad opportunities where, you know, they can get tied into being 100% captive and locked down on, you know, renewals, no vesting, stuff like that. And then uh, one thing I, I I thought was pretty cool in here, and I haven't I haven't finished the book, I have to be honest, but uh, I have read a, a, a good bit of it, is the part about selling part-time. Um, can you expand a little bit on that, just, you know, as far as some agents that might be listening that are thinking about coming in this and wondering if they can start part-time and what, you know, with 
I would assume the 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 vision later of actually going full time because this is not something you really want to halfway do. Absolutely. I mean, the, their last part there, you know, it, like I said earlier, the, the biggest problem I have is you can start this business off and you've got one shot to do it right, and you don't know what you don't know when you get started in this business. And mm-hmm. all you can really do is trust the person above you to do you right. Many times they don't, and if you give it that one honest shot. But you're in a very bad setup. It can just jettison your your chances for success. And to answer your question about the part time approach to getting started, I think this is a fantastic approach. There's a lot of people that don't agree with me, but the way that I can rebuttal that argument is I can tell you from personal experience. You know, one thing you'll read in my book, and if you do any sort of interaction with me, you're going to find out that I actually failed out of the final expense business largely because. Well, two reasons. Number one, I had a relationship with a vendor that was screwing up my leads. Uh huh. To be totally transparent, I did some things too that caused me to fail out. You know, I didn't follow the system. And so, to answer the question about going part time, I had to I had to get a full time wage earning profession because I had to make the money. I had to pay the bill, but to keep my wife and newborn child uh, fed. Sure. And and so I got a job working for a Fortune 500 company selling uniforms. And, uh, you know, I actually thought my career was over at that point, but I realized, oh, it just sucked to work for the man. Right, <laughs> and yep. And so I thought, well, you know what, I just, the real problem was I had enough time to just get into consideration. And soberly, I could say that it was really my fault as to the way things turned out. So I started following the system. Uh, correctly, number one, but I did it on a part-time basis. And and the reason it's, it's totally fine to do, do things on a part-time basis is, first of all, it eliminates commission breath. You know, Matt, you know what commission yep. breath is. Oh, yeah. Anybody who's trained agents know what that is. And basically what that means is that your level of desperation to make a sale becomes obvious to the person you're selling to. And just like bad breath, commission breath is repulsive. It's it, 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 it pushes away potential people from buying because they may not be able to put their finger on it. There's just something off with you. They don't want to do business with somebody who they don't trust on a gut level. And so selling part-time with a wage-earning job, look, you, you have that commission breath removed entirely. And it gives you the time to learn the business, to learn how to sell proficiently. And then over time, as you get better, it allows you with more confidence to jump with both feet in. Now, I think if you, even if you do part-time, you should be, I always say, you should do the job with a full-time mentality, but it's, it's, but on a part-time basis. Meaning, you know, don't dabble in, in final expense, one or two appointments a week, you know, leads here and there, treat it like a, like a side job, like a side deal. You know, uh, buy your 15 leads a week, work after you're done at the job, always work every Saturday. Again, if you're really serious about this, you'll do that, you'll do whatever it takes, and commit yourself to the process. It may be part-time, but you're giving it a full-time effort. <clears throat> right, I agree. Yeah, and I like the part two. You, you kind of go over some stuff about, obviously, the different uh, types of leads, you know, whether it's aged or uh, fresh direct mail or telemarketing and avatar and 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 you go into something else here too that I thought was pretty interesting about the 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 true cost the true cost you know the cost of free final expense leads. Um, <laughs> you want to touch on that <laughs> a little bit? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. The, now I've recruited you know well over two hundred agents in the past two and a half years, and yep. I can tell you the biggest impediment for somebody starting in this business is coming up with the money to pay for leads. Right. And so. There's a lot of operations out there. I'm not saying it's necessarily a bad thing, per se. Over the short term, it's definitely a bad deal in the long term. There's a lot of there's a lot of operations that fully pay for your leads to work, and they start you off at a lower commission level. Again, if you've got more willpower and tenacity and desire than you do money, this could be a good starting point to get your career off. But the problem is, is, is in the long run, and that's always problem just as a whole with a lot of these agency uh, opportunities in the final expense market. Right. With free leads, if you compare, if you're a very good agent and you're writing 12, 
fifteen thousand a month consistently, you you know, and you're making a fifty percent contract, fifty percent commission. Yeah, you may be making a good chunk of change, especially if you're young and you're single and you don't have a lot of obligations. But when you start comparing to what you can get, because if I got a guy that's writing that much a year, you know, he's probably going to be on a hundred and ten, a hundred and twenty point percentage contract. Mm-hmm. You know, once he gets through the mentorship program, he's at the top of the comps. But when you compare a straight commission with your leads paid versus a top level contract, but then you pay for your leads, it, it all, all, almost always, and it should almost always, be more advantageous to run your final expense job like a business and pay for your leads. Yep. And have a higher commission than basically allow the agency to do it. Because, look, the bottom line is you have to think from the agency's perspective. You know, they're paying for your leads. You may or may not work them, and, and they may be out of money. So they're going to charge a premium for the leads, or more, more specifically, they're going to make sure that you're going to be at a commission level low enough to where even if they got some guys that never do anything with the leads, they're still making money, they're still profitable. But for the guy who's proficient, you're, you're, the, you're subsidizing the losers. Meaning if you're very good and you're working the leads like you should be and you're doing well in a free lead environment, you know, you're, you're making way less than you could and you don't want to be in that deal for a long run. Right. Another thing I've kind of found, Dave, with the free lead programs, and you know this too, is that uh, number one, um, usually you, and this can be somewhat true with any lead program. Well, well, no, I can't say that. It, it's going to depend on your agency whether they want to stack agents on top of each other in areas, which I think it's is uh, not moral at all to do. And I, obviously, you don't do that, and I don't do that. But um, you know. You absolutely usually have no choice on where you're going to go to work, all right, week to week. It's it's wherever the free leads are within a four-hour driving time from you, here's your leads. Or you go in a general pool and pick from, here's your leads, you know. And that and also um, you're pretty much most of the time captive, um, yeah. you know. You know, with not being able to to have uh, renewals or vesting or, or what have you, and uh, pretty pretty strict and demanding on telling you what you can and can't do. So, uh, but the big thing is not knowing where you're going to work from week to week and having to have that stress on you without knowing you've got a consistent uh, program in place. Yeah, you know, mentioning that really, this is again the whole reason I wrote this book. Because the book is designed to, to give transparency where in many cases these final expense agencies don't give transparency. Now, of course, I talk a lot about the selling process, leads, um, you know, the whole process of learning how to sell. Don't get me wrong, there's a lot of that in there, but, you know, we and, and there's a reason for spending a lot of time on, on this aspect of it because it's just as important to work with the right organization as it is to get the selling and the prospecting process down because that's what is the, the least transparent about the process. Case in point, in what you're mentioning, you know, I know I have an idea of who you're talking about. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with the particular organization or if, if that's how they run things. You know, that's just how they do their business. The problem is, is that they don't tell their agents that, look, you know, you can have control. You know, you can say, I want to work Huntsville, Alabama. I want to work Birmingham, Alabama. You know, I live in Huntsville, and I want to work in Huntsville. But they won't tell you that because they want you to be totally aligned with how they do things. You know, when they tell you, if they were to say, hey, yeah, you know, you can buy leads from XYZ vendor, and you can tell them where the drop is, they'll do it. It's about the same price. It starts to pull the veneer back from the whole, the whole setup about how they want the agents to think. You know, they want people to think, oh, it's normal for me to drive from Birmingham to Mobile, Alabama on a, on a four-hour drive that just works the leads, because that's where the leads are, where the leads could easily be within your backyard, talking to the same kind of people there as it would be in Mobile. Right. And then somewhere completely on the other side of the map, the next lead. You know, that's just a grind. Nothing wrong with it if, you're, if that's how you like to work, but it doesn't have to be that way. And the more transparency you got and the more facts and information you have, you know, it allows the 
agent make a better decision on which agency offers a setup that's going to be in their most to their most advantage. Right, and another thing too, I think it's pretty interesting. You put you actually put some examples of some direct mail leads in here um, that we you know <laughs> that are the tried and true ones um, for people to get a good idea on what to look for and. Then I, I think I, that's about as far as I got through it. But I think you've touched on uh, the ones to stay away from too, Dave. Um, like the, uh, you know, some of the ones that offer a a payment <laughs> for sending the card back. Just stuff like that. I think is hokey. You know? <laughs> I mean, uh, that that's complete junk in my opinion. Um, so yeah. Now, can you touch a little bit on because? You know, some people may disagree with either one of us on this, but the part, and I've always believed this from day one being this, that like you say in the book, final expense is bought, not sold. So, I guess, you know, obviously you're not going to give a full-blown presentation in the book, but it's um, it gives enough, you know, great information on, you know, what the the general consensus is on, you know, how it's how it's bought if you do a correct presentation and then again how you know you can learn to be uh, a great agent that that does a lot of replacements to help people yeah absolutely I mean the, the biggest portion of the book or at least half of the portion of the book is how to actually do this face to face right you know I feel strongly that final expense is a consultative sale. It's not a high pressure type of sale. Right. Again, no disrespect to car salesmen or, or Kirby vacuum salesmen. You know, that's a one shot deal. You get the deal. You do whatever it takes to make the sale. Right. Because if you can sell it and stays on the books for a couple of days, there's no refund provisions. You're you're clear. You got your commission. You're free. you're in you're in the green. And the clients but, on that end expect that. I mean, they're kind of conditioned to expect that anyway. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And so, in final expense, it's not like that at all. Yep. You know, when you, when you make a sale, most agents will have an advance of commission. Now, they, the reason it's called an advance is that it's paid in advance of your customer actually <laughs> making the premium payments, meaning it's effectively an un, 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 unsecure loan. Right. And so, the whole premise is that there's a risk factor to somebody, it, it, a sale you're making advancing to you, getting... <coughs> Laps and you having a chargeback, and so it's commensurate. It's, it's vital that you sell appropriately to minimize the chargeback risk. Again, these are things that you know aren't discussed, and so my whole deal is we want to sell in a process in which allows us as final expense agents to accurately match what that what that prospect wants, what their needs are. And just as important, what their budget is, and then show them why our choice, our product, is superior to the competition, and and to basically render a sales presentation to knock out objections before they happen, to make it a smooth process to where you're not pressuring the person to buy. You know, you're doing a very permission-based, uh, permission-based sales process that is like a running on a track uh, that leads you ultimately to the sale if you can match exactly what they're looking for and that they set the criteria for you as the agent for them to buy from you. Right. And, you know, while I'm thinking about it fresh on my mind, can you, can you tell people a little bit about how um, this is a somewhat of a, a helpful fundraiser for I guess Mark Rosenthal and you know some things that's been going on in his life and you're you're helping out tremendously by doing this can you can you mention a little bit about that and what what you've got going on with the book with that yeah yeah absolutely so one of the things I've decided just, just for so you understand my personal motives <coughs> I decided at the beginning of this year one of my new year's resolutions was to be a little bit more charitable um, and find ways to give back I mean it, it's good for other people it's good for yourself in a lot of different ways uh, if you believe in karma like I do you, you've got to be proactive in, in doing things when people need help and I'm in a position where I can do that so in writing this book and completing it I realized uh, it's a, really through this process that Mark Rosenthal a guy who's in the, the life insurance recruitment 
business uh, had advanced stages of cervical <coughs> sclerosis. Right. And, um, to the point where he's almost incapacitated. He can very, he doesn't stand long without getting out of breath and tired and in pain. Uh, he can't work as efficiently at all like he used to and truly as sad as it is it's so progressive and so aggressive right that you know he is getting more and more incapacitated and, and incapable usually multiple sclerosis is something that lingers for years and can be managed but his has been extremely uh, aggressive so Mark's getting a treatment uh, in Mexico it's an advanced alternative treatment uh, and the expense the, the results have been fantastic there's been all sorts of success stories where people can barely walk now they can run on the treadmill they have their lives given back to them so it's not some you know newfangled you know uh crazy approach right there's actually people who who are are wildly successful doing it and so mark decided he wanted to do it but the expense to just do the treatment this is just the treatment fifty thousand dollars right of course insurance isn't going to pay that it's in mexico not you know FDA approved and right. out of the country, and then on top of that, there's always the downtime with you know not being able to work and, and make an income to pay your normal bills. He's got a huge family, yeah. So you know, Mark's been able to raise a lot of money to pay for the cause, but now he needs extra money to just just make sure that he can buy through the recovery time, and that's where my book comes into play here. Um, I'm donating all the profits from the book, meaning after the expense of producing the book, everything else above and beyond that is going directly in the hands of Mark Rosenthal. Uh, as of this recording, I have sold approximately 125 books, roughly. Uh, I have around $900 in commissions and royalties from the sales of these books. So my goal was to cut a check for $1,000. I'm pretty sure I'm going to hit that. Uh, sometime within the next couple of days at the rate people are buying. Um, and it's only been about two weeks since I've released the book. Right. So my goal is, man, if I can get 1500 to 2000 and if I can uh, drive down to Griffin and see him and, and hand a check over to him personally, that would just that would just be awesome. And so for you guys that are thinking about buying this book, uh, if, you know, if you're, well, you know, there's other books out there, I'm not sure if I really need it. You buying this book, whether it's through the Kindle version or the print version, every dollar of profit that you buy within the first month of this being published is going directly in the hands of somebody who desperately needs it to help their family and to help Mark's recovery. So you're doing something good for somebody else while giving yourself uh, the opportunity to learn a ton of information that's, that's actionable uh, to help you sell final expense. So, you know, um, yeah, he's going to have for you to buy the book because it's going to help somebody out who who really needs to help. Yeah, and he's going to have like you know travel expenses, like you said, you know, and downtime too, which is going to affect income as well. So, and just and we'll let everybody know full disclosure, I did purchase mine. <laughs> um, I yeah. wanted to to give to, so uh, it is. I didn't get a free book, and uh, I think everybody that wants one should uh, <clears throat> you know should head over. I'll put a link to the. Uh, to the uh, to the book in the video and uh, go click on it and order it. Hey, it's you know uh, I don't even remember the price, Dave. I ordered it a while back. I don't even remember how much it is, but uh, it, very affordable. Just go go grab the it's, book, guys. It's cheap if you if you want the Kindle version. It's nine dollars and ninety nine cents. There you go. And then um, if you want the print version, I'm I'm I have what's called Picard syndrome. You know, Captain Picard from Star Trek. Yeah. He, he loves to read actual books as opposed to reading them on a digital screen. I'm kind of like that, so I've got my hard copy here, 200-page um, hard copy book. That, I think, Amazon's discounted it. It's fifteen twenty nine. Yeah. I said it's 16 or so, but, you know, it's about what you would expect. But the, the key thing is, is even if you're experienced in this business, you know, the likelihood of you finding a couple of nuggets that can be, uh, you know, actionable right away is pretty high. You know, and even if you make one extra sell off the book, that will easily pay for your investment. If you're bringing new in this business, I, I mean, I'm not an arrogant person at all, but this book is absolutely what you want to read. It's going to have all the answers, all the things you never knew to ask within the pages presented in a way designed really just to give you a, a sober yet informative look at the final expense business and also how to sell professionally and ethically too. 
Yeah, especially the you got a pretty good thick section here on um, fact finding and pre-qualifying the prospect, which is looks like it's going to be interesting too. Um, yeah, it looks good, man. There's a lot of stuff in here. Uh, yeah, the, the pre-qualifying section. When I when I recruit agents, I, I I always they usually review my videos and, and read my material, and they always I always ask them when they do ride along with that. I ask, what, what, based on what you've read the scene, what do you think the most important part of the presentation is for me? And, and it always, for me, is the second section, the pre-qualification of that time. To me, yep. the, that in their book, in that book is, is probably the most important part of the book because <clears throat> if you spend any time with me as an agent, personally producing myself, I hate wasting time. I hate spending time with people we just don't meet the criteria right. uh, to be qualified prospects. So yeah, I agree. I, I'm, <laughs> yeah, I'm very focused. I'm very passionate about teaching agents how to value their time, even though they may have more time than money. If you learn how to pre-qualify and you learn how to ask the right questions right up front, you're going to save yourself so much heartache, so much um, wasted time on time, people who will yeah. never lie from you because... Well, they're deadbeats, or they got issues that you can't overcome. Right. And so, the section alone, that that will save so many agents time. It'll save them more money, allow them to sell more efficiently. I mean, that section alone, to me, is worth the value of the book. Yeah, and I and I'll tell you, you know, as far as saving time. I've been doing this a little while now too, and I consider myself a pretty good agent. And you know, yesterday. There were there were two prospects that I was in the house literally less than four minutes. <laughs> you right, know, right. Um, enough to say my pleasantries and sit down at the table and find out why I was there, and there was nothing. <laughs> yeah, so, <laughs> or I don't so, have any money. All righty, I need to go. Yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah. And so, so you see, what Matt's mentioning there is such an important skill. It's it's it's, it's easily dismissible, and we're Hollywood has convinced all of us that. You know we've got to we've got to grind on a prospect. We've got to we've got to uh, pitch them twenty times from twenty different angles. We can't take no for an answer. We got to do all this crap to waste so much time and eventually, you know, headlock Mildred into <laughs> signing up for a life insurance deal just for to wake up the next day and cancel it because that was the only way to get rid of it. There you go. And that's just not the way to sell final expense. What Max describing here makes sound like. How the hell can he do anything in four minutes? But the reason he can is because he know what he knows what questions, what conditions must be met for somebody to buy. If if they don't meet that condition, it doesn't matter how often or how much you rebuttal it or how much you push. The likelihood is that you know uh, 19 out of 20 times they're not going to buy. They're they're not going to stick on the books, and you're going to be frustrated and blow yourself out of the business. That's why the, the, the pre-qualification method is so important. There are people out there that want to buy life insurance all over the place. Right. There are people that well, that like you being there, that want to work with you, that are engaged. In the it, that's the key, Dave. If they show they're in, they want to be engaged, then you can move forward. Yeah. If you have somebody who says, well, I thought this is from, this is Mutual of Obama, this is some free insurance. And uh, you mean I got to pay money for this, you know? And, and then you ask them some questions, and I can't afford fifteen bucks a month. And so what are you going to do at this point? You're going to you're going to sit here and go on for the next twenty minutes, and right? Out. Oh, well, I guess I can. No, you you see those people again, you know, with experience and time, you find that those people are the way they are for a reason, and those people don't stick on the books. And if they do buy from you, you know, usually they cancel before it even becomes issued. And Paid. Right. You've wasted all this time and frustration and rebuttaling for a prospect that's a deadbeat. Yeah. So, and I'm sure it's in your book here somewhere. Like I said, I'm not finished completely with it. But an example would be, you know, uh, if you're talking to a 71 or 72 year old man or woman, they have no coverage. Uh, and this goes hand in hand with some of the stuff you're talking about in the presentation. You know, and and there, let's say let's give an example. They're in perfect health. They can qualify for the best rates, right? First day coverage, uh, and they're going to get the best rate from you. And you get through that portion, they give you. Well, I want to think about it because I didn't want to make a decision today. I'm out because 
I'm not going to, like, you know, I'll, you know, I may say, well, you know, a lot of people can't qualify for what you just did on these preferred rates. So going once, going twice, and I kind of laugh. And if they're like, no, 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 I'll say, okay, here's my card. See you. And I'm out, you know. I, I just... Yeah, so. <laughs> they've waited that long and still don't have any coverage and they're not going to make a decision then you know it's time to leave and here, here's the thing that I teach in the book I, I teach how to identify these people as quickly and as politely as possible Yep. because many times if you follow the presentation correctly you know the first part of a good presentation for final expense is you know what were your thoughts and concerns <coughs> for coming back the car Yep. And just asking a very open-ended question. And then asking a few other questions such as, you know, do you want to be buried or cremated? Getting some facts on how much they think it costs. Why they think it's important to have it. And so you can ask some need-based analysis questions to figure out if they actually have a need. Yep. And if they're actually motivated by emotion. You know, I, I agree with other agents that are very good producers. We don't want to put these people into an emotional frenzy to buy. We want them to buy soberly, but we want to know that, you know, all sales are emotionally based, but they're justified with logic. Right. You know, people that buy life insurance love their family, and they they love the people enough to not screw them when they die. Right. Still. And, you know, but they justify it because they can fit their budget, they understand that life is, is mortal, it doesn't last forever, and they understand that, hey, it's time to do something. I'm not getting any younger. You know, and so, you know, you want to fact find and do this stuff so to prevent you from dealing with these deadbeats. But one of the things that I, I train agents, and, and this kind of knowledge that I'm talking about here comes from just like mass experience, thousands of presentations where you deal with people, and, and for some reason you just don't sell them, and it, it's weird. And they always have to analyze things and see what you did so yep. you can improve. But you can even do everything I described and end up in the same position Matt's in. Yep. What I've realized, again, it's taken me years of personal production, is, is there are just people out there who just don't give a shit. That's right. They don't care about anybody. They don't care about themselves, really. And they certainly don't care about their loved ones. You can't help a person who doesn't care about people that, that, that their family they don't love them. You know, you're, you're not going to force them to buy you know, because they just don't care. You know, those are the worst process. Those are the worst kind of people in life. And, you know, if you follow the approach I teach and you, you effectively pre-qualify, you effectively squash objections before they come up, if you sell based on their budget, you sell based off of need, you do a very good presentation showing the difference between what you do and how it's better than the alternative. Right. And you still get that crap at the end. More likely, you can walk away confident knowing that these people are deadbeats. And if they give you, well, we need to think about it. Yeah. You know, and well, we're just not sure. Right. Oh, we've got, we got to pay our bankruptcy off. Give us six more months. You know, there's always something that comes up with these people, too. They're, that's how they are through life. Their, their character is dodgy. You know, and you don't see that until you do it long enough. So my point is, is that, you know, the approach we use is very ethical and honest. It gets right to the point. And we sell, the goal is to sell the people that should be sold. That's right. And, and, and they quickly, uh, as politely as possible, get away from the people that would never buy and not spend too much emotional collateral or emotional capital on them being frustrated. Sure. Not buying. Sure. And there's got to be, you know, mutual professional respect between you and and them. And, you know, we're coming into their home. But, you know, as another example, uh, a couple of weeks ago, you know, um, I guess probably lower middle class uh, couple I went into, you know, in their mid seventies, and you know, you gotta be able to have somewhat command, respect f to move them off their couch to a table if possible, and that wasn't gonna happen with them. Um, so at that point, you just kind of, you know, you know, you gotta know how to play your cards. But you know, I sat down and and I noticed that, um, you know, I they cut, I asked them to cut the TV down a little bit. They did that. But I kept notice when I was talking to them, their eyes kept going to the TV. So, you know, and they weren't very engaged with me. And I said, you know, I'm not trying to be disrespectful, but it appears to me you guys are more interested in watching your TV and soap operas or whatever you're watching than actually, uh, 
investing a few minutes of your time to, you know, with me to make sure you're okay with either what you have now or, you know, what's coming in the future. So I bid you a good day. <laughs> and, you know, they didn't put up a fuss for fight. Okay, have a good day. So I feel, in an instance like that, you know, I don't feel bad at all um, about moving on. And I think that's one thing in your book that, like you say, final expense is bought and not sold. That's Those are prime examples. Um, you know, that, that with presentations, it's just... Uh, a, a great uh, example of how you know if you follow a, a a guided presentation like you have then it's it, it kind of all falls into place but sometimes you get fooled but you know that's life yeah, yeah there's no system that's foolproof you know every system you know if you stay if you trade stocks if you know anything about trading stocks you know a system can have a, a large failure rate as long as the failure rate controlled and the upside's good on the actual success rate, you can still have a good system. You know, my system isn't perfect. You're still going to get objections. You're still going to get, you know, hang-ups. You're still going to walk out of the house and wonder, the hell did I did wrong? I did everything Dave said. Right. You know, so, and, and that, and exactly, you know, the big, big thing you said there, it's so important to understand, and I think it's worth getting into, final expenses is buy, it's not sold. Mm-hmm. I, I always like to explain it like this. If you've got to walk into a home, get, here's your perfect example. You're walking into a home with these seven-year-olds, so the, the former example. Right. And they're in perfect shape. They don't have any savings. They, they know they're going to die. You know, they're, they're of the persuasion that, you know, they kind of understand possibly. If you got to go in there and you you got to sell them up. They, let me explain to you. Do you know what life insurance is? No, what is life insurance? Well, it's great. You know, actually... You get money when you die because you don't get it. Your blood will do. Oh wow! How does it work? If you've got to explain to somebody in this marketplace what life insurance is <laughs> or the concept of it, there's a serious problem. Yeah. Okay. That's why you know you're not selling them on life insurance. These people who buy from us with the lead programs we have. Yep. You know they've already reached a point in the buying process that they know a little bit about life insurance. They know that what it does. They know some of the companies, they may have looked around, but they've gotten to a, a, a decision point where they know and have decided for themselves that, I, you know, I think I need to get something. They may already uh, have but, some, yeah. And, and let me make, make sure that's clear for the guys listening. Mm-hmm. That's for the people that are actually buyers, okay? Yep. The guys that you walk in and they're like, what is this about? I thought it was from the government. You know, th- there could be all sorts of answers. But you'll run across people who just don't care, you know, and, and, and mm-hmm. you're never going to swallow the people who don't give a shit. Yeah. You're, you're going to swallow the people who actually care and who have gotten to the point in the process to actually determine that they, they want to spend something and they need life insurance, but they're just not what they're, what you have to sell them on. This is critical. This is what you sell them on. You sell them on you, first of all. Uh, as being competent, you know what you're talking about. But then second of all, you sell them on why doing business with you and your company that you select for them is a better alternative than the other ones that come through the mail in our, in our community. That's really where the sale is made. You know, but you're not selling them on, you got to buy life insurance. It's the greatest thing ever. If you do, it's, it's, you're in trouble. <laughs> I agree. I agree. Sometimes they'll even have something and they shouldn't be in it and you can get into that with them and, you know, sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. You just have to, that just really, I think at that point it comes, you know, you can prep yourself and, but a lot of that comes with experience too. Um, But as much reading as you can do on the material beforehand is great. (laughs) Well, you know, the thing too is that spending enough years in final expense teaches you about human behavior. I think that's one of the most unlikely things I've gained from from doing this profession. You really understand people a lot yep. better, especially as time goes on. You know, because you sit across the table and, you know, Mildred can't afford 15 bucks a month, but she's got a $100 cable bill. You know, she's got, um, you know, uh, a two-pack-a-day cigarette habit. Right. You know, she might have a, you know, a, 
you know, a fifth of vodka in the fridge. You know, nobody, nobody she, she had the money for that. It's amazing how fast she can produce money for that. And that goes back to the whole point. You know, you can't force these people to love or care, you know, about one particular thing if they don't. You know, if their love and their interest is in vices and, and entertainment, you know that they got money and they're spending it on that. But, you know, look, it's very hard to take somebody to divest themselves out of that and put it towards this. People find a way if they want it and they love the people that they want the money to go to. People that don't aren't. And that's it. It's time to move on and find a real prospect. That's it. That Words to live by right there. <laughs> <laughs> Where to live by? Well, great, Dave. Well, look, we're running right up on forty minutes, so I know you got stuff to take care of, Dave. And I want to uh, end this by saying again: the name of the book is "The Official Guide to Selling Final Expense Insurance: The Proven Final Expense Insurance Sales and Lead Generation System Used by Top Final Expense Agents Across the Country" by David M. DeFord. So. Any closing thoughts, Dave? And uh, again, I'll put the link. Um, you know, contact information you want to give out, anything like that. Go, go for it. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Matt, for the opportunity to talk about the book and, and the cause behind it. I think uh, I hope to be able to be very uh, do a very uh, good job by Mark Rosenthal uh, with the proceeds from the sales of this book. Again, like Matt said, if you go down to the bottom. Uh, where it says show more in the tab of the YouTube video. You can find the link uh, directly uh, to Amazon where you can buy the Kindle or hardback or paperback version. If you don't see that for some reason, just go to uh, Amazon, put in selling final expense. Mine should be at the top. It's the red book uh, with yellow uh, font coloring on the uh, actual text. Uh, worst case scenario, you can always go to my website at bethyagentmentor.com. I should have a link at the top about my book and then you can buy it through that way. But in the meantime, Matt, thank you so much for having me today. I really appreciate it, and uh, hope you have a good one. Okay, no problem, David. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Yes, sir. Well, there you go, guys. Another great interview. I uh, appreciate David taking his time to uh, let us know a little bit more information about what he's been up to, and um, you guys go out and purchase the book. I'm sure it could help any uh, final expense agent, uh, you guys. Uh, veterans alike, you never stop learning. Again, guys, for the best final expense tele leads and avatar leads in the country, be sure to visit us at www.theleadjerk.com. Again, www.theleadjerk.com. Thanks so much.